Welcome to Electron Online. Now we're going to show you yet another way of solving linear first order differential equations. Again, they are in the form of y prime plus some function of x times y equals some other function of x. We already know that the solution to the homogeneous equation can be written as y prime plus f of x times y equals zero. So this would be the homogeneous part where r of x now becomes equal to zero. We know the solution can be written as e to the minus times the integral of f of x dx. And let's call that v of x. If that's true, then the solution to the non-homogeneous equation should look like this. It should be another function of x multiplied times the v of x, where the v of x is the solution to the homogeneous part. And so therefore, we can then say that y, which would be the solution of this equation, can be written as u times v, where v is e to the minus integral of f of x dx. So from that, we're going to find the solution to this first order linear differential equation. So what we're going to do is we're going to substitute u times v back into our equation, of course. We need to find out what y prime is equal to. If y is equal to u times v, then y prime can be written as the first times the derivative of the second plus the second times the derivative of the first. And we'll substitute, substitute that in for y prime. So then this equation then becomes we have u times v prime plus v times u prime plus some function of x, let's call it f, times y, and y of course then would be u times v, u times v, and that would equal some other function of x, r of x, which is the non-homogeneous part of the equation. All right, now we need to rearrange those terms in a way that we can make some sense out of it. And let me show you why. What I'm going to do here is say, well, if v of x is a solution to the homogeneous part of the equation, and since the homogeneous parts can be written as y prime plus f of x times y, then we can conclude that v prime plus f times v must equal zero. That is true since if this is the solution to the homogeneous part, then this must be the solution to the homogeneous part as well. We can be, we'll be able to write that as a function of v. Now, since that is equal to zero, I'm now going to try and isolate v prime plus f times v. So I can do that by taking this and taking this and grouping that together and bring this forward. So I'm going to rewrite this as v times u prime plus, bringing this up next here, we, we, we get u times v prime plus f times u times v is equal to, and that's a sad looking v, here we go, that's better, times r of x. Now I'm going to factor out a u and I get v times u prime plus u times v prime plus f times v is equal to r of x. Now remember what we said before, since v is the solution to the homogeneous part, and therefore we can also write v like this, then I look over here and I realize that this portion right here must equal zero because I know that it equals zero there. That means this whole thing here is zero, which means that v times u prime is equal to r of x, and let me just go ahead and write r without the of x there, which means that u prime is equal to r divided by v, which means that u is equal to the integral of r divided by v. So now I have a solution for u. I can plug that into my equation right here. I have a solution for v, which means that my solution y, let me come up here. So we have y, which is equal to u times v, which is equal to u times e to the minus integral of f of x dx can now be written as u can now be written as the integral of r times z. So that means that this can now be written as the integral of r times or r divided by v and that would be then multiplied, I'll go ahead and put brackets around it, e to the minus integral of f of x dx. All right, we're almost there now. So now I'm going to rearrange those terms. I'm going to bring this over here. So this can now be written as e to the minus integral of f of x dx times the integral. Now remember that v was equal to e to the minus integral of f of x dx. So 1 over v would then be equal to e to the positive integral of f of x dx. So this can now be written as e to the positive integral of f of x dx times r times dx 
because we have to integrate that. We have to have a dx in there. And then finally, of course, we're going to end up with some constant of integration. And then if I put brackets around this, I now have the exact same solution that I got in the previous set of videos for solving a non-homogeneous linear first order differential equation. So this gives you the exact same solution, except the way we got it to this time was to using the method of variation of parameters. So that's the theory behind this particular method. And now we'll show you some examples of how to actually do this particular method.